everybody, today I'm going to talk about being Asian in the United States, and I believe that I'm somewhat qualified to talk about this, uh, just given obvious circumstances. Um, before I get started, I want to note that this video is not going to be about uh, me ranting about racism in this country or how I've felt minoritized as a Asian American. Uh, if you're looking for that kind of stuff, feel free to skip and find another video. Um, for a little bit of my background, which I think is important given the context of this video, I am a Korean American who actually was born in Korea, immigrated when I was six or seven, lived in Southern California amidst a bunch of Asians, but also a bunch of non-Asians. Um, I went to college with a mostly uh, white friend group, Caucasian people. Then I live in Chicago, also with mostly Caucasians. Uh, then now I live in New York where there's everything and everyone of all shapes, colors, and sizes. Uh, so I think that's a little important uh, to see, so I understand where I'm coming from. Also, my experiences don't speak for obligatory statement. My experiences don't speak for everyone. And because I've already said that, I'm not going to say it anymore. These are my experiences and my thoughts on uh, being Asian. Um, again, I, I don't think I'm a victim of racism. Whenever we talk about race in this country now, you have to talk about racism and how things have affected me and how systematic things have made me X, Y, Z. I honestly have been fine, and I've been uh, pretty grateful uh, for the treatment that I have received in this country. Yes, there were comments here and there, but that's just the reality, and you got to move on. Um, positives, cool things. We have culture. Um, not that other cultures or other people don't have culture, but Asian Americans really have a lot of culture, um, and we have long history uh, within our respective countries. We have slightly decent history in this country where we've started forming our own hybrid cultures, but there's always culture at home. There's good food, new languages, I'm bilingual. There's things that you can attach to, relate to, have fun with. Um, in terms of relatability and attachability, that's another strength that Asian Americans have. If you meet other Asian Americans, especially the specific Asian American that you are, it's very easy to relate to them. You have somewhat similar experiences. There's a bit of uh, easier, lower barrier to entry of being friends with them. Something that I think uh, being a minority in this country or being Asian American allows you to have. But then you start thinking, maybe white people have that with all other white people, and that's another perk of ben, them being white, and great for them. Um, and as someone who has had majority white friends growing up, uh, it's not something that I've actively uh, felt pressure of not having or felt bad about, just because I have it on my own ways, and we all have different ways to dip, relate to people that were similar to uh, I want to talk about this idea of like self-hatred and something that I've seen a lot, especially in this younger generation of TikTok and YouTube where people talk actively about uh, being hurt or these stereotypes that we must break together and a lot of people that don't want to be a certain race or have uh, sad or mad feelings about the types of parents that they've had. I think this stuff is so toxic and doesn't do anyone good. I don't know what actively talking about that kind of stuff uh, goes anywhere, which ironically, I guess I'm talking about this stuff, so uh, hypocrite to me. But for those that are loathing your parents for wanting to be doctors, lawyers, bankers, uh, it's because they know what is good for you. And ultimately, you'll probably thank them in the long run. Um, and you and your dreams of becoming a SoundCloud rapper are probably not going to be achieved. Um, and there's a reason why they're sticking to the right things. Of course, we're in a paradigm shift and perhaps we'll have a new generation of mostly YouTube creators, but you need to somewhat bet on what has been tried and true. And there's a reason why your parents have worked their butt off to bring you here and then uh, wish you are taking some kind of specialty role that will probably give you uh, benefits in the long-term future. That is all I'll say about that. I am thinking specifically about a couple of people in my mind, but self-hatred, parent loathing is not going to get you anywhere. And frankly, most of your parents that have brought you here um, I've heard a lot of, they only did it for themselves. It's selfish. They did it to give you a better opportunity. If you were back in your respective countries, you probably would have been even more miserable. Um, becoming more Asian in college is something that I never really experienced because I became even more white in college as I went to a pretty white school, which I was perfectly fine with. It was super fun. I found a new version of myself. But a lot of my friends who I had in high school and middle school that were not very Asian and they always hung out with white people or non-Asian uh, tend to become very Asian during college and all their friends become Asian and they kind of embrace this Asian-ness. I've had friends who were born here and now like almost exclusively speak their respective languages, which I think is kind of cool, kind of interesting. Also, probably some sociological, psychological explanation to it, especially for those that were extremely a certain way and now they're extremely another way. Uh, props to them. I think it's interesting that people inevitably kind of go back to their own mold. Of course, there's exceptions, but I've seen a lot of that happen where people that weren't necessarily very 
Asian become very Asian or obsessed in that culture. What I don't appreciate is I don't think getting dragon tattoos and sucking on USBs and driving sports cars and drinking boba and going to raves is necessarily the type of culture that I want brewing for my people. I don't want my kids to look up to that and think, wow, that's Asian American culture. Um, no offense to those individuals, I guess full offense to those individuals. I think it's fine to be yourself and have fun, but I don't want that to be the hallmark of the Asian American culture life. Um, I think one thing that I also think about is movie representation. I guess now it's becoming kind of a typical video. Uh, not a huge complaint. I think Asian American history in this country is not that long. Uh, we still represent a pretty small minority of the people, so it should be represented that way, I will say there's other minorities that are far, 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 far more represented these days. I won't name specifically who, but it seems a little odd that there's a, an agenda definitely being pushed of people that definitely don't make up a big percentage of this population that are overrepresented in media and us as a whole are far underrepresented uh, given our growing rate and our relative influence on culture, even by population count, it seems like we're pretty underrepresented as a old time uh, Marvel fan who is no longer a Marvel fan because Marvel kind of sucks now. Um, the fact that the first Asian superhero in Marvel is a martial arts guy who has father problems. Am I going to complain about that? No, it's a stereotype that rings kind of true, perhaps minus the martial arts part now, but it's not surprising that that's Shang-Chi as the first guy, uh, you know, big fan of the actor, but not sure how far we've come in terms of that. Yeah, we got Squid Games and all these uh, Asia originals coming out and becoming popular, but Asian representation in America, especially as Asian Americans become more flourished in this country, still seems to be low, uh, even in commercials. I remember someone did this analysis of Super Bowl commercial and the respective racial um, representations in all these uh, commercials. And as not surprisingly, Asian Americans far underrepresented compared to their population, or maybe they were exactly represented, um, and then the other minorities overrepresented and white people far underrepresented. Um, not speaking on anything political here or um, what agendas these represent, it's just an interesting factor. Perhaps Asians just aren't strong enough in the media yet. Maybe I will go push for that. Um, for why 80% of you guys uh, subscribe to this channel, let's talk about jobs. Um, I think there's a decent amount of Asian representation in jobs. And if, in fact, I think compared to the population, there's probably a lot of Asian Americans in finance roles and doctorate roles, medical fields, uh, law, because we work hard and our parents, um, a lot of times, I've, as I've explained earlier, have told us to do these things because they're stable, high income, and somewhat recession resistant things that people end up doing. Um, granted, I, I am also speaking from non-experience because my parents have never really told me to do a certain job. In some ways, I kind of wish they told me to do a certain job, so I felt like I have no optionality. Perhaps I would have been happier. Time for another story. In jobs, I think there's a decent amount of role models, uh, not as much as, or certainly more than movies, um, but there's people that are kind of mentoring. There's societies or organizations. There's definitely not uh, minority programs for Asian Americans for that very reason. Um, that brings up kind of the next topic of college. Affirmative action, uh, very mixed feelings. Do I think that screwed me up for college? Not really. I think I probably got the best that I could. I'm very thankful for it. Um, but I've seen people around me that got screwed uh, specifically for that. Um, is there a solution for that? I'm not sure. Um, just an interesting path that this country is taking in uh, valuing merit um, and how they evaluate merit. In conclusion, uh, race is something that uh, you can't control. It's one of the many things you really can't control. Um, and this age of self-identification, I don't think anytime soon you're going to be able to self-identify your race. So you really got to own it. For things that you can change, you have to own it. You have to take advantage of it. Uh, you have to make content about it and make money off of people watching it. Um, but jokes aside, I, I think it's important to embrace it. Um, you don't have to be overly proud of it. You don't have to uh, put your flag uh, in your Instagram bio or anything like that. Um, but I do think it's important to think about it um, and consider what this means for you and how you can use it to your advantage. Um, I am very proud. Uh, I don't know if proud is the right word. I don't think I'm proud to have black hair. I'm not proud to uh, be a dude the same way that uh, being Asian is just who I am. Um, but I, I'm very happy with who I am. I'm growingly happy with who I am. And I think I'm getting better at using it to market myself to uh, be more successful and become just a better person overall. I hope that I didn't 
overstep in other people's uh, experiences. I hope that there were points that you could relate. Uh, let me know if you completely disagree or completely agree in the comments below. Let's keep arguing. As always, I thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Let's go.